Hey, what is up? It's Free's first time. My name is Free, and Sober October is over. Yes, I did practice that probably about five times in the mirror before I began. But anyway, it was a good month. Cobwebs kind of cleared out. I suggest you try it next year. It's actually worth doing. But during that month, I did accumulate several bottles, and i um, looking forward to reviewing those for you. And I set some goals for myself on the, the growth of the channel and whatnot, and I was hoping to hit 150 subscribers before year's end, and during that month it happened. So I'm very grateful for that. Thank you all very kindly if you have subscribed, and if you haven't yet, ooh, boy, it's just right there. Just do it. <laughs> it's. Is, is the shaming working? I, I don't think it is, but whatever. Um, yeah, if, if you don't subscribe, just give me a thumbs up. I would really, really appreciate that. That would make me very happy. Thank you in advance. Um, and also, while the month of October was zooming by, um, I was challenged to the Reddit's You Only Need Five Bottles of Whiskey Challenge by the What We Drink in uh, Whiskey YouTube channel. And a link to their uh, channels down there in the description. Um, they're great. Uh, everything they do is, is worth watching, so check them out. And um, as you might know, or maybe I'm informing you for the first time, I live in China, so the, the Reddit challenge is typically bourbons. And as I can get bourbons here, I can't get anything really special or anything like that. So to do this list as it's meant to be done with bourbons, I don't think I can really contribute to the fullest extent uh, as I could. So I'm going to amend the rules a little bit and just do all whiskeys in general. So on my list, I'm going to have a, a bourbon, uh, world whiskeys, and mostly scotches. So there's that. And at the end, oh, and I will be giving each whiskey that I have on my list a musical pairing, as we usually do on the channel, because whiskey and music are best friends. And at the very end, I'll be paying the challenge forward. I will be challenging other YouTube channels to do what I just did and tell me, tell us, there, you only need five bottles, Reddit challenge list. So. Without any further ado, let's continue to bottle number one. Oh, and before I forget the five categories for this you only need five bottles things. Number one, daily drinker. Number two, impress your guests, which I'm going to need to talk about that a little bit when the time comes, but we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. Number three is the mixer. Number four is the Friday night pour or something great. One of those two. And then finally, the number five is your special occasion bottle, the thing that you are saving for that just so right occasion. So now let's jump on into it. Bottle number one. Uh, ba -doop, ba -doop. <laughs> Surprise! Are you surprised though? I don't know why you would be. It's the Wild Turkey 101. It's pretty much a staple in most people's liquor cabinets. It's just got everything that you're looking for in a budget bourbon. The flavors, fantastic. Building the foundation of what a bourbon should taste like. Price, fantastic. It's not going to break the bank. You won't feel guilty mixing it. You won't feel guilty drinking it more often than you should. And it's just all around solid and no one's going to argue against that. I mean, across the board, all the whiskey tubers I've watched, all the whiskey reviews that I've read, Across the board, this is getting raving reviews. So if you haven't tried the 101 yet, what? And for this is my own personal opinion. Avoid the, the 81, avoid, avoid the, the 40 proof as well. I don't think those things have enough flavor to, to do much. I would stick with the 101. Or if you want to get crazy and go higher proof, go with the rare breed. Um, I do have an honorable mention in the Scotch world, and that is the Deanston 12. Again, it's, it's very similar as far as the comments I'm gonna make on this to this. It's the flavors there, 46.3% ABV. Um, it's widely available and it is flavorful. If you wanna go a little cheaper, you can. You can go with the Deanston Virgin Oak and I have some of that and I dig it. It's just, I don't know, it's a little too fruit punch chewing gum, bubble gum for me and I prefer the balance of the 12 a little bit more. Both of these are completely content being background players if you want them to be, but if you want to, you know, sit there and dissect them, they'll hold up. They will. Um, so, these are my daily drinkers. 
daily drinkers. I don't drink every day, but if I were to, <laughs> I would probably uh, reach for one of these. Um, okay, now the song for these two, Rocksteady by The Whispers. Just listen to it. You'll get it. And all of the songs that I'm going to be mentioning from now on will be in the, uh, there'll be links to those on the YouTubes down in the description, so check them out. So, all right, that's number one. Number two. Cool, all right, yeah, well, bottle number two on our list of five is the Impress Your Guests bottle, and I think the conversation needs to be had, like, who are these guests? <laughs> are they, are they whiskey folk? Or are they just some people that want to come over and drink all your whiskey and get drunk? So I'm going to kind of just pop right into the middle in the hope that they, they're there to get drunk, but they're also down for learning something and they are budding whiskey enthusiasts. And they, they care, they care. So I'm gonna take that kind of stance moving forward. And the bottle I would drop in front of them is the uh, is McNair's Lumreek 10 year old, half strength. Now I know when you're trying to impress somebody, you're probably gonna bust out something expensive. Not this, this is like 70 bucks. I think, um, or maybe in something old, not this, 10 years old. But what this is, in my opinion, is just an education in a bottle. There are so much to be talked about with this bottle. It's phenomenal, it's fascinating. It's, everyone's gonna learn something. Conversation's gonna be going for hours specifically on this bottle itself. It's three different regions. We got the Glen Allocky Distillery, which is the, the foundation that Billy Walker uh, is using to blend the other Isla and Speyside single malts that he got into this. So, and you can taste all of those regions. That's amazing. That's a conversation to be had. It's naturally presented. So that's a conversation that can be had. No chill filtering, no color added. Beautiful. We can talk about a whiskey titan in the industry. Billy Walker, the master distiller at Glen Allocky. That's something to talk about. The regions, as I mentioned before, um, we, the nose and the palate on this are very different in my opinion. And that's something that people probably don't expect. And I think that's really cool to bring to someone's attention and, and talk about. We have uh, the layering of flavors, like I said before, the barrels being used, which I will talk about, uh, and the regions. You can taste them all in, in, in symphony. And the, they're all at different le parts of the palate. And it's just so cool. It's it's got virgin oak, it's got sherry barrels, and it's got wine barriques, and you can taste them all. And it's really fun to pinpoint them out and talk about it. So the layering is amazing. It's cast strength. So you can talk about the whole proof to preference conversation. And I mentioned the barrels, which is rad. And the most important thing that I would like to express when impressing my, impressing my guests or having a conversation about this with my guests is one of two things. Blends are okay. And it doesn't have to be expensive to be good. I know I've been saying that for years, but you you understand. So, the Lumreek 10 year old, I'm telling you, is delicious. I mean, I actually haven't even mentioned how good this stuff actually is, because it is, it's fantastic. So not only are they gonna see a relatively low age and a relatively good price, but they're also gonna be just taken aback by how actual good this stuff really, really is. So the Impress Your Guest bottle for me is the Lumreek 12 year old cast strength. Did I say 12 year old? Yeah, so the song for this one, and I think I've absolutely blasted this one out of the park, is Close to the Edge by the band Yes. It's long, it's it's a bit loud, it's a bit noisy, and but eventually there are different levels, there are different layers of instruments and, and, and things like that, but every, but when everything comes together and synchronizes, it's phenomenal. It's a beautiful, beautiful song. Check it out, Close to the Edge by Yes. Next is the, the mixer. I don't really make mixed drinks at home. I usually just uh, either have a beer or have a neat whiskey, so this is, this isn't really a category that I give too many shits about, but a lot of people might. And um, I'm just gonna throw down the monkey shoulder. It's 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 great and neat, it's good to mixture. It's the flavor is nice, it can stand up to probably what you put into it, whether it's Coke or fruit juice. Um, this is the 40 percenter. I would go with the 43 if you can find it, because I think those extra three points of ABV will actually help the aforementioned flavor stand up to whatever you're mixing it with. So yeah. Monkey Shoulder. It's all right. It's, it's, it's a good, solid, blended malt. Um, the song for this one, uh, Beat on the Rat by the Ramones. Not too many notes, 
but it's gonna get your toe tapping and it'll get you there. Okie dokie, next up, number four, the Friday Night Pour, AKA something great. Uh, when thinking about this, I was kind of, I was a bit indecisive. I didn't know if this was gonna be like, I'm gonna pour this cause it's Friday night and I'm about to get down type of thing. So I'm gonna start with something good. Or is it like a Friday night thing, I've worked hard all week and I need to sit down and decompress type of thing. And I need to think of a song to reflect both of those. But I went with the former. So this is the Glen Scotia Victoriana. This is, <laughs> I'm less inclined to share this one because I don't think this is for everyone, although it can easily be for everyone. It's cast strength as well from Glen Scotia. It's 54.2%. Um, I paid 95 bucks for it, so it's not, it's not crazy expensive, but it's not something you're gonna buy once a month. I'm not anyway. Um, so having it be slightly special for a Friday night is, um, yeah, ideal for me. Um, I've been looking forward to this for a very long time, and when I first initially had it, I wasn't that impressed. Uh, although I gave it some time and let it open up a little bit, and once I got past the shoulders, barely, it, uh, it kind of presented itself to me. I'm freezing! Shut up! And, and, and yeah, it, it lived up to all the, the, the things that people were saying. The reputation did precede it, but it, it lived up to it. Um, and it's from Campbelltown, but it doesn't have that stereotypical Campbelltown flavor that you're kind of expecting. It's a bit more mellow, and being cast strength, you'd expect it to be pretty punchy, but it's not. It's actually quite smooth and, and rolls down the gullet pretty well. As far as flavor goes, I it honestly, for me, it captured like all five of the key flavors. We got salty, we have sour, there's bitter, there's a little bit of spice in there, and there's that umami as well. And all of those things smeared on top of a freshly baked piece of wheat bread. That's what I got out of this, and I love it. And I would happily start my Friday evening with that while listening to this song. Too Hot to Stop by the Bar -Kays. It's a little bit of funk for you, and I can't help but have a little shimmy through my body while listening to that. I believe it was the opening song in, during the opening credits of Super Bad. Uh, do you remember that? I believe that's it. But man, that song is so good. Check it out, pour a glass of that, turn that song on, and enjoy your Friday night. Yeah? All right, number five. All right, here we are at the end of the list. Number five, the special occasion bottle. Now, if you've watched my channel for some time, you, eh, this won't surprise you at all. And I honestly, I actively tried to find something to replace it, but I just couldn't. I couldn't find anything that held a candle to it. I hold it in such high regard, and, and, I, and I, I savor every single drop. And that is the, uh, it's the Cavallon Vino Barrique Solist. This stuff is so good. Um, and whether you are a whiskey pro or a whiskey no one, this, you'll still taste it and you'll feel the quality immediately. It is cast strength. This one's like, what, 57? Yeah, 57.1. It's only five years old, like five and a half years old. Look at that color. Man, Taiwan, you're doing it right. Doing it right. And, I, and I'm sad that that much is gone. Like, I don't want this to ever end. And I would, price, you know, considered, buy this again in a heartbeat. Luckily, here in China, I get this for like $110 US. But I hear in the States, it could range anywhere to like, like three to 500, which is fucking insane to spend on a consumable thing. But if I found that for 110 again, I would absolutely gobble it up not think twice because having as much of that in my life as possible is just it needs to be done so that is why i would consider a special occasion bottle because if i were living in the states which i plan on being at some point in time it will be a crazy expensive one that i would not even think of opening outside of a massively special occasion and just the quality alone if i regularly drank something this good i would get so spoiled and i would just hate everything else probably i don't want to raise my standards too high because i like to i like to keep it on the budget friendly road so that's my list uh oh song for this and i have already given one but i'm gonna add another one the video that I made, the collaborative video that I made with What We Drinking Guys, I'll put it, I, I never remember which corner it is, so I'm just gonna do this for some reason. 
Um, it's, yeah, click on the link, check it out. It was a lot of fun. Um, the, the divinals, I touch myself. It works. Listen to it, drink this, and you'll be like, yeah, Freed, you're, you're absolutely right. And a cool part at the very end of that song, she talks about how she doesn't want anybody else because when she thinks about you, she touches herself. And the very cool part at the very end, she's like, I honestly do. <laughs> That's my favorite part. I'm like, well, right on. Thank you for being honest. And um, the second song I would like to attach to this is, oh shit, what was it? Oh man, it took me a second. Red Red Wine, not by UB40, by Neil Diamond. It's better. I promise you the Neil Diamond version is better. Links are down there in the description. Um, but if you can just get a pour of this or anything like that, gosh, gobble it up. It's so, so good. And I would absolutely keep this for a special occasion. Even the remainder of this bottle, I'm not gonna crack it unless there is a real, real reason to, because it's that good. All right, thus concludes my list. Did you agree? Would you change anything? Give me your list of five down in the comments. I'm really curious and it, who knows, maybe I'll find something new that I haven't tried yet that I must. Now, this is the part of the show where I pay it forward. I extend the call out to other YouTubers and I've got three in mind. And number one is the Grail Girls, uh, Jen and Rachel. I have been loving their content. They are hilarious, they're very down to earth, and their tasting notes are just really funny, but they're so accurate. And it's just a blast to watch them, and they have great chemistry, and it's so much fun. So, Rachel and Jen, you've been challenged. <laughs> All right, uh, the next guy is uh, Jeff Wishgear. Jeff. Dude, I've been enjoying your stuff, the bottle slapping, your, your editing, you're hilarious, and I love it. Thank you for everything you've done, and uh, I, I challenge you, man. Let's see what you have to say about these five. Again, I think you all are in the States either, and actually all three of my YouTubers aren't in the States, so you can obviously amend this list, uh, the rules anyway, to any, any way you see fit. Obviously, it doesn't have to be bourbon. Um, so yeah, Jeff, you've been challenged. And finally, um, McIntyre's Malts, Wade, my dude. I think he's still relatively new, but he's, he's doing really well for himself. And he's just so fun to listen to. He's so enthusiastic. It, it just jumps through the screen. And I, I love listening to him describe things and experience all these things. And he's the type of dude that you just want to sit down with and have a conversation with. Lots of wits. But uh, yeah, Wade, McIntyre's Malts, you've been challenged. All right, cool. Well, I hope to hear from you three. And if I don't, no pressure. It's all good. So thank you very much for watching to the end. I really appreciate it. Again, a link to What We Drinking, McIntyre's Malts, The Grail, and Jeff Whiskey. All of their links are down there in the description, along with links to all of the songs that I mentioned here earlier. Cool. Please like and subscribe if you have not yet, and we will see you very soon, I'm sure. Thanks. Bye.